Welcome back to the FeeCast, your weekly dose of economic thinking from your friends at the Foundation for Economic Education. My name, as always, is Richard Lawrence, and I'm here today with our resplendent panel of Anna Jane Peril, Dan Sanchez, and Sean Malone, who is typically behind the camera, Except but for- in this week for Marianne March, who's at a marketing conference and unable to join us. So we're happy to have you today, Sean. That's right. I'm thrilled to be here. How are you guys doing? Also, a uh, recent uh, fill-in host for, for Richard as well. Yeah, true. Um, we've demoted you. Hitter. You couldn't handle that, but we'll let you sit over there. <laughs> that was your shot. That was your yeah, one yeah. shot. That's my, my Everything one chance. in its place. You well, know? Fair. Um, so who likes to drive cars? Let me just open up with that. I didn't used to, but I do now, actually. You enjoy driving. I, I enjoy, enjoy driving. driving. Oh, I hate it. If I never have to get behind the wheel of a car ever again. Seriously. Because it's, it, to me, it's wrought with danger, threat of police, threat, threat of tickets. I'm mm. going to either kill someone, kill myself. Um, yeah, no. I no enjoyed way. it until I moved to Atlanta. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a nightmare here, for sure. I, so you guys I are enjoy going... It. You enjoy it. Yeah. And, but you, on the other hand, and maybe Dan are going to be in the front of the line when self-driving cars come onto the market, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. No? No. No? no. no? <laughs> I, I don't Don't like, trust them? Yeah, I don't like being that much out of control. Oh, see, I don't trust myself. That's the problem. <laughs> well, I do trust myself, and I'm typically a very good driver. Just a little anecdote is I got my very first speeding ticket about two weeks ago when I was driving down near the Georgia-Alabama border in West Point, Georgia, to see my godmother. I'm driving with her friend in the car, our friend in the car, and all of a sudden, of course, I see the flashing lights, and I've gone a little bit too fast, and it was an expensive ticket, something I don't want to repeat, so on my drive down to Florida for the beach, I just used cruise control the entire time. Yeah, you said this Ooh. recently, that like you'd never had a ticket, which just blows my yeah, mind. Yeah, never a speeding ticket. Sorry, that's, oh, I see, I was interpreting, but either way, I've had, I'm, what, 26, 27? Ooh, um, I've had like three speeding tickets at this point. Never a speeding ticket. I was pulled over once for having an expired tag on oh, my mom's okay. car. So that, Mm. mom, was an issue. Uh, The week before, uh, my court date was my week before I started college. So that was a a very interesting time. Well, you said you've never had an accident, right? Never had an accident. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the goal of this new law, in fact, in Georgia, to ban texting or any kind of input into the phone while driving. This so, is the <laughs> hands-free <laughs> Georgia hands law. Free. And it yeah. just came online. It's now in force ever since July 1st of this year. And uh, I think our panel might have some mixed feelings about this. Well, well I got yelled at about it, which was, which was bizarre. But I was, not by a cop. But not by a cop. <laughs> I, was, I, was, uh, I was stopped. Uh, at a red light with many, many other cars during rush hour, and a guy and I just pulled my phone up just to just to glance at it. I actually had a buddy in the car at the time too, so we were mostly conversing. And a guy um, made a bunch of motions like, "You're, what are you doing?" And he's in the car next to me, and I, I thought, "What's this insane person doing?" And so he motioned to roll down the window. So I did, and he's a hand signaling virtue signaler. Hand signaling <laughs> virtue signaler who, who told me to roll down the window, and then said, "What, what have you? Have you been living under a rock? I, I it's hands free, and it's a hands free state now. What are you doing?" And I was like, "Well, we're stopped, so I didn't really think it would be that big of a deal." But okay, sir, thank you for your time, and then we continued on our way. But it's one of the most bizarre. Uh, scoldings from a random human being. Very close to a citizen's arrest. It was, it could have been. Right on the verge. I I mean, he was irate enough. I mean. I mean, you say he's not a police officer, but he's sort of like deputizing himself. Oh, yeah. He did. It's did. just like, why does he care? I don't like, know. there's so many other things. Honestly, this has really just created a situation where, and I'm a little bit of a side, I'm going to go on a little bit of an aside right now, but do you guys remember T9 texting? You guys probably yeah. were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that was very physical, right? You could use your flip phone and you could physically feel oh, the buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And you even, pressed like number seven, ex- like six times. Yes. And, and it was like yes. um, predictive texting. Yeah. Going from that, like the early, which is, you know, a technology that precurses like, um, you know, uh, touch phones, uh, touch screens. Going from that texting to touchscreens, you 
lost an ability. I used to be able to text without looking at my phone at all. Yeah. Remember that? Like, yeah. and I could do that in the car and very easily just look at the windshield. Then the touchscreen came and I had no idea what I was typing. You had to look at it um, because you can't feel the buttons. And now like this hands-free thing, I'm almost getting more and more, I'm getting like less and less safe with my texting. And so it's like, it's creating this situation where I now have to like bring it down here. And so it's like, not only am I up here and I can't look at it and I can't feel the buttons, I'm like down here trying to. What I've gotten just, weirdly good at, this actually started, um, you know, about a year ago or whatever, I was starting to experience a lot of kind of carpal tunnel kind of things. So I started getting really, I tried anyway to get really good with um, uh, speech to text stuff. And so I started doing that with my phone too. But the problem is it doesn't actually work that well. No. So there's a lot of things where you have to look at it and the word wasn't exactly right. And you throw or, around a lot of slang. So a lot of youth, they, youth yeah, culture words that the phone doesn't know about. Yeah, so. well, and also I find it... Wakanda. It, have yeah. you taught it that yet? <laughs> I haven't. But it also <laughs> randomly capitalizes words that I that shouldn't be. Like mm. r regular stuff like there or your or whatever. It'll just for some reason be a capital. Maybe it thinks you're done with the sentence and we're going on to a new sentence. It in doesn't the insert the periods. I don't know. <laughs> So there's stuff like that where I'll try to do that to avoid having to do the the, the drawing with my hand thing mm. and look at it. But then that doesn't work, so you have to look at it and, and do that kind of stuff. Well, now we're not supposed to be doing any of this. Right, right. absolutely. As yes. of no. July mm -hmm. the 1st, Georgia joined 14 other states to become number 15 plus D.C. in having this hands-free, no texting while driving law. And uh, basically what it means is a driver can't have any... Uh, phone in their hand. They can't support a phone on their body. You have to have one of these, you know, mounts that's either magnetic or maybe physical. Uh, you might may not send or read any text-based communications. Uh, you may not send any messages. You might uh, may not watch any video unless it's for navigation. Here's the interesting part. <laughs> Uh, we were reviewing this in our pre-production meeting. The hands-free law does not apply to the following electronic devices. I'm going to summarize. It doesn't apply to radio, citizens band radio, two-way communications device from a commercial uh, source. What in the way world is that? It sounds like a phone to me. You know what else sounds like a phone is a subscription-based emergency communications <laughs> device. I mean, that's the very definition of, of what a cell my phone. phone is. Yeah. Um, in vehicle security, ham radio, navigation, or remote diagnostic system. And so you've got all these exceptions baked into this law. Yeah. It almost makes you wonder, and of course we can have a larger conversation about who was in favor of this law. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it seems pretty clear if you listen to that list that a lot of that probably came from lobbying and probably that lobbying came from police unions and truckers and like, you know... Anybody who uses that kind of stuff but would want to avoid the ban, which we were talking about before, too. Like, if you see the amount of, of distractions, let's say, in a police cruiser, like, it, it, it's it, like a desk. It's a, yeah, it yeah. just dwarfs so whatever the, 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 the distractions that I've ever had in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, when I got pulled over for my very first speeding ticket, they printed it out on a laser printer. Yeah. It's like, where's that laser printer in the you car? You got a FedEx Kinko's in, in the, the back of your seat. car. <laughs> Yeah. 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 And so we have an article on this. It's actually been very popular on the websites by Mark Scribner from CEI. Dan, yeah. tell us about that article because it's got some interesting data. Yes. Uh, it's called Why a Nationwide Ban on Texting While Driving is a Bad Idea. And uh, it talks about how in uh, 2017, there were 37,461 highway fatalities. Uh, of those, 9% were distraction affected crash fatalities. And uh, of the total, 1.3%, so, so just a portion of that 9%, were involved in cell phone use of all kinds. So about 486 fatalities total. And nationally. So, mm -hmm. This is nationally. 486. So for, for one thing, it's, it's much smaller than, uh, than you'd think, given like the uproar and the prioritization of, uh, of this issue. And to put that in context, 28% of highway fatalities that year in 2016 were from alcohol-related reasons. Mm -hmm. So compare 1.5% from distracted driving with an electronic device, such as a cell phone, yeah. to alcohol-related. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So clearly, this is not something... I mean, it, we had talked about this with, with plastic bands a, a few weeks ago, but this is not something that represents a 
a, a major problem statistically, right? This is not this is not a big thing that is mm-hmm. killing lots and lots of people, but it is something that I guess governments feel like they have some control over, that they can do something. About. I like how you mentioned it's not a big problem statistically because yeah. it is actually a big problem for the people who are affected. Sure. So let's just acknowledge yeah, that. Of course. For, yeah. the, right. for the 400 right. and you said 67 people or so yeah. uh, who were 86. killed. 86. 486, 486 people. That's in 2016, it's a huge problem. Yeah, and right, so that's, right. let's not diminish yeah. that. The question yeah. really becomes, is this something that warrants the attention that a ban, mm-hmm. again, like we've been talking yeah. about recently, actually uh, would, would call for? Yeah. And would the ban actually help? Because it's also right. interesting, it's interesting to see who supported the who supports the ban, but it's interesting to see who opposes it. And one uh, interest that imposes it is the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Interesting. Um, and and you would think that, you know, they have a lot of skin in the game. If, yeah. if, yeah. if anyone yeah. would be interested in reducing their own liability to pay out for claims for accidents, it would be, you know, the insurance industry. Mm-hmm. But but they point out that um, when you... W- when you have a ban, what you do is you, you motivate people to hide from their texting from police. Absolutely. So whereas yeah. if there wasn't a ban, at least they have it up in the eye line of, of traffic. But if you have the ban, then they're looking down because they're trying to hide the phone. And that's much more likely to cause an accident. And I've realized that I've done this. Oh, absolutely. Somewhat, right. And and I, I've realized that not that I, I spend a lot of time texting in the car, but where I am trying to change a podcast or yeah. to press play or stop on something or to pick up a phone call or whatever else. Even to hit shuffle on my music. It's yeah. like things like that. I, I, I actually I actually worry and I pull over to a rest stop. I was driving to Savannah for the Labor Day weekend and I was had to pull over to the rest area every time. I was like, okay, now I'm in the mood for podcasts. So I'm going to like, you know, yeah. deal with that. Pull have to over. completely stop. God, yeah. But of course, you know, all this uh, enforcement around the yeah. law is still being discovered as we experience yeah. it in our daily lives. According to some people, and I don't know exactly if this is legitimate or not, you are allowed one press per <laughs> yeah. per use of as, your phone. As long as yeah, it's supposedly. still on the dashboard or, you know. Does it, so it can't be on like somewhere. on your thigh. It can't be like sitting right here. That's I doubt what, it, that's, right? I mean, that's what I would well, the do reason, hypothetically maybe. The reason for the single <laughs> press is you're supposed to be answering a call, right. hanging up a call, right. uh, you know, pressing go on your navigation <laughs> device or pressing stop, right? And so you can imagine a situation where someone gets pulled over because, you know, the cop says, I saw you pushing on your phone more than once. Uh, you know, you could say, well, you know, I did actually break between presses, right? <laughs> I did only press it once at a time. I mean, it's it's odd, too, because yeah. like I was reading that list of exemptions before. You know, you can argue that a cell phone is a personal subscription-based emergency communications device. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny, too. Be- I think that one's a really interesting one just because when I was a kid, when I was 15, 16 years old, that's all cell phones were, Yeah, right? That's literally it was th- there's a huge discussion between my brother and myself and my parents around even being allowed to have a cell phone at 16, 17 years old. And the, the working case at that point was, well, look, if we have a phone and we shared a phone at first – Nokia 8600 brick or whatever that we and leave it to you it's, to remember the model. I name. sure do, man. Well, who doesn't remember the Nokia? I mean, that, get, that's get that's some that's snake classic. going on that. That was the only <laughs> game on there. Classic brick, but um, but we shared that uh, early. You know, I was I think 16, maybe 17. It was after we sh- we were sharing a car as well at that point, and so we had that explicitly because. If you get stranded, sure. if you're stuck somewhere, if you need help. It's the excuse or slash thing. reason that every kid in my high school wanted yeah. a cell phone, right? But it's a legitimate I it's need also it for safety, Mom. Yeah. Right? Okay. Weirdly, yeah. it's a legitimate reason, though. You know? It is. I mean, when, when we were little, I don't know if you guys had this, when I was little, the rule for my mom was, you know, every couple hours or whatever, who, what, where, why, when, yep. tell us where you are, tell us what you're doing, tell us who you're with. Um, cell phones made that possible in a way that, you know, you otherwise had to be at, you know, somebody's house or be able to use a payphone or something else like that, 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 you know, wasn't realistic all the time, especially once you, you know, are into high school and, you know, you're 17, yeah. you're, you're out about with your friends. So it's realistic to argue 
that cell phones have made our lives much safer, right? Well, yeah. In addition to more convenient, in addition to richer, in addition to more productive. Mm-hmm. But but let's and, talk. And, a, and by the way, not just not just that, but also maps and stuff that you absolutely. would never have had access right. to. I think that makes you immensely safer as well. Yeah. Knowing where you're where going. you are, where you're going, not going through a bad neighborhood, yeah. ways diverts you around traffic, yeah. all the rest. Yeah. But you know, of course, let's go back to this law and the fact that it seeks to, at least on its surface, address a problem, a problem that has affected many people individually, right? It may not be the most pressing problem, but at least it's looking to accomplish a goal that we can all be behind, which is fewer roadway fatalities, right? We don't want to see any roadway fatalities, and we don't want to see any caused by distracted driving. And that includes, by the way, in that 9% number, Dan, that you quoted, rummaging around on the floor for the mm-hmm. fry that you dropped recently, <laughs> or trying to find, you know, whatever in the back seat to keep your kid placated. Or just being lost in thought. Precisely. Yeah. That's actually one of the reasons is daydreaming, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what was the, because there was a number for the lost there, in thought one, which I thought was really high. Uh, yeah. Right? We were, when we were looking into this, it was, there is some, um, I think there may not be a number associated with the fact that we were looking at, but it was along the lines of distracted or lost in thought was the cause of more accidents than Something. cell phone related. Yeah. It, Distraction. But I, yeah, I need, yeah, we need more specifics. So let's talk a little bit about how the sausage gets made, right? I mean, it's it's obviously seeking to accomplish a mm-hmm. goal that we all find important, but why do you guys suppose this law exists here in Georgia now? in addition to the other states and District of Columbia? I mean, well, I, I would mention here that I, I was actually pulled over for this, this offense many, many years ago in California. This, this kind of law um, has existed you know, in other places for quite some time. When I was living in Los Angeles, this would have been 2007 or eight. Uh, it wasn't a hands-free thing, but you weren't allowed to talk on the phone mm-hmm, at, mm-hmm. At, at the time. And I, <laughs> I happened to make a tremendous error of actively making eye contact with a, with a motorcycle cop do that. across the street while mm-hmm. I was on the phone. Self-incriminating, Self-incriminating. Sean. Self-incriminating. Um, but so this has been a law that's been in some of these major metropolitan areas. But why? Also, that's LA my is like trendy. Well, so, so it's you, like, you, you know, had Pinkberry mentioned. was there first, <laughs> so it's, I mean, this is also there. That's the thing. I think you see this with a lot of laws that start in New York or L.A. where it gets rolled out to the to kind of to the rest of the country. And I think some of it is a little bit of signaling or it is a little bit of like, look, we're as cosmopolitan as Los Angeles, we have the same kinds of institutions and rules and See, everything else. Uh, what at, do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean by like cosmopolitan? And how does hands free? Because I'm actually like annoyed by the hands free thing. And I every time I complain about Georgia, uh, that's what I start with. So it's like, I don't understand how this is appealing to citizens of the state at all. I don't know necessarily how it would either. But I do see that you you see. So you'll see this with a lot of things like uh, fast food bans or, you know, restrictions on neighborhoods that that uh, for um call food deserts or whatever they start mm-hmm. imposing zoning restrictions and say you have to have right. a whole foods within this <laughs> this area and it starts in you know the hip trendy cities it starts in los angeles it starts in new york and then kind of gets rolled out into other places and it's not clear a lot of the times that this has anything to do with efficacy yeah right because we've also seen this with with uh traffic cameras where there's no uh, there's no evidence of any kind that traffic cameras reduce Fatalities. In fact, the opposite in fact, the is opposite. the case. I really? lived in Chicago for yeah. many, many years, and data coming out of Chicago where there are traffic cams everywhere show that they actually increase accidents. Wait, why do people are like, slamming on their brakes doing. and stuff? What was the question? I'm oh, sorry, just because like people are slamming on their brakes and stuff, or I mean, slamming I on their brakes, yeah. trying to you know speed through the intersection before you know the light turns red <sighs> and mm-hmm, the camera mm-hmm. catches yeah. them. I mean, that's strictly a revenue generating device, right? I mean, that's yeah. what I mean. That's what people complain well, I mean, about. That's that. one of the reasons that this law may be in place here in yeah. Georgia as well, mm-hmm. right? Because for the first incident, it's a hundred or it's a fifty dollar fine, but <laughs> for every other incident, the fine keeps increasing, right? So if you're caught two, three, four times, you could have a fine up to one hundred and fifty dollars. That was originally nine hundred dollars capped. 
in, wow. in the original legislation, but they worked it down to 150. So they're definitely kind of gunning for a revenue generating purpose yeah. here as well. You, I mean, we live in a state where you get points on your license. Does it affect your license in that way? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, it may. I mean, I, yeah, I, just, I have no idea off I the top of really my know head. It works in Georgia either. Um, and so I think what you said, Sean, or maybe Dan, about signaling, right? That this is something that Georgia wants to show the rest of the country that they are, you know, with it. They are on the cutting edge of legislation, that they are uh, sensitive to every tool in the arsenal that can be used, or every tool in the toolbox that can be used in order to make driving safer. And this, of course, in an era when Georgia is becoming a bigger hub for filmmaking, mm -hmm. all the Marvel movies are being made here, various other films are being made here, not to mention the fact that they're being induced by incentives and tax, uh, in taxes and otherwise, uh, but that's another subject entirely. But it could would make Georgia appear to be a more attractive pro-business location than other places in the Southeast, which is yeah. what Georgia is is regarded as today. Or at least make it feel a little bit more like some of the, the larger cities, you know, that, that people are coming from, especially if you think about the film industry presence and stuff, like people coming from L.A. Look, I hear this a lot from people. I mean, you hear this about America referencing the rest of the world, like, oh, how backwards are you with that, with your gun laws? Or right. How backwards are you? I can't believe we we allow this when the rest of the world doesn't allow that. And I think the same thing applies state to state or city to city sometimes. Like LA has banned this. Look at California is already ahead of the curve on this thing. See, I'm not sold. So I'm just not sold on the idea that this somehow makes Georgia look like a better place to live or do business. I don't see that, yeah. but that's because that would not appeal to me. I'd be like, oh, you're, you know, oh, yeah. cool, a ban on something. I, some, one more thing I can't do. So for me, I'm not, it's right. not compelling to me that argument. I think it's genuinely, um, especially compared to, I guess it's an out of proportion response to something that's upsetting, which is fatality, which is death, which is safety. Um, it's an out of, portion, out of proportion response, I think, um, that the government can actually control. And that's yeah. why that, and that's why it was so easy. Not easy to enact, but that's why it's been enacted. Because so, like the straws, absolutely. it's just a choice that they can... It's a choice yeah. people can make, and, and of course it's being forced on them now. So now we've established that this law exists. There are certain exemptions to it, obviously, that are, that are worth discussing. That perhaps it doesn't signal to everybody that this is a state that's progressive in the non-political sense, but very forward-looking. I want to go a little bit deeper, and I want to kind of go into the more philosophical side of things. Because, you know, one of the reasons that this sort of law is established is as a deterrent, right? And, you know, people might say, well, now that it's illegal— you're not going to be texting while driving, so therefore there's going to be fewer fatalities or even accidents on the road. But there's also an interesting conception of justice in this, and I wanted to actually ask you, Dan, what you think about that. Well, it reminds me of the movie Minority Report, <laughs> and uh, they have this notion of pre-crime, where it's like if you could somehow predict uh, what, who, who's going to commit what crime, and then so you can you know bring them put, put them in jail b beforehand, and. I think that pre-crime is fundamentally against the American uh, conception of justice. That that what 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 liberty is about is being uh, accountable to the actual crimes that you do, not the crimes that you may do. And and I, I think I think the slogan "No victim, no crime" yes. is, is a good slogan because basically it's the idea that you um, you, you can't really predict who what is going to be uh risky behavior and 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 what what is not going to be risky behavior and of course in minority report they have this technology yeah. that mm -hmm. allows them to foresee who is thinking about committing whatever kind of crime we obviously don't have the benefit of that technology but it appears to be something that they're looking for by outlawing what they believe is a serious precondition to yeah. a problem or a crime. I think right. one one interesting thing about that, because I, I I agree with that. I think that there's the difficulty or the challenge to that position a little bit is that, you know, then you start, you know, thinking about maybe we should live in a world where there's there's no uh, indicators or precursors or anything like that that we ever make illegal. And so that, that leads to, yeah, and I've seen some people make this argument, which is, you know, not very popular is that even drunk driving should be okay as long as people don't actually hurt somebody, which is yeah. a pretty, pretty tough sell for a lot of people. And also, obviously, there are behaviors that can be 
more risky than others. Well, there's some alcoholics who are more dangerous when they haven't had right. a drink. So that's that's part of that. You can go down that road and yeah. make some of those kinds of arguments. Of course, I don't know how effective those arguments are going to be with most people. But but the um, the thing that's interesting to me about this is that you should be able to see... I would be much more in favor of police actually watching for erratic behavior. Mm. So like, not not to say, oh, you're on the phone or I saw you texting, but to say, how's your driving? Yeah. Are you weaving I saw you cross between the, yeah. lanes? Did you cross the line? Mm-hmm. Are you speeding up and slowing down in a way that's not very predictable? Because that's the hazardous behavior. That is the hazardous yeah. behavior, right. Mm-hmm. And that's also something that you as a cop, I think, I'm not a cop, I can't entirely make this claim, but... I would say, like, it should be easier to see that, right, than it would be to see whether or not somebody was on the phone or they were applying lipstick or they were rummaging around in their console or whatever. Unless right? you make direct eye contact with them, Sean. Unless, While the phone's unless, in the hand. <laughs> unless you look at the police officer across the street. No, but but that's what, that's what I would think because then it's not pre-crime anymore. Then it is a tangible thing that you could say you were driving erratically and recklessly and that's the problem. I care that you are driving mm-hmm, recklessly. Mm-hmm. So let me spot that. And then if it's because it's you're on a cell phone or because you were lost in thought or because you're tired or what, what who cares? I don't really care about that part. I care that you're like, you know, not in your lane. And, yeah. Which by the way happens to me every day in Atlanta. Is somebody like whoop. <laughs> and I, I just think that like the the truly the the fully non pre crime approach is that if you actually hurt someone, yeah. yes. then then you are liable. And uh, that is deterred because of your personal liability, but especially because of your insurance company's personal liability uh, or, or liability, and that they then are incentivized to have policies that you know reward good behavior and, and punish bad behavior, especially the different uh, premiums that they charge. Well, so that's a good point, Dan. So who ultimately is responsible for safety? I would submit on the road, right? I would submit it's the individual operating the vehicle, right? But there are also other parties involved. You mentioned the insurance company. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like it's it's interesting because I think that if we think about insurance in a positive way, it is there to it is there obviously to um, make it easier for us to drive. Um, but I'm thinking that the police charging you for having your cell phone in your hand um, and then reporting that to your insurance company, that's kind of just this process that has allowed the insurance company to determine your premium in such a way, right? So your premium might go up if they report that you have tickets. But if you think about removing, if you think about removing the enforcement component of that and the authority component of that, um, like the government authority component of that, Insurance is then incentivized to create new and innovative ways to make sure you're a safe driver, right. which is so yeah. much more meaningful to me and I think could be so much better than a policeman just saying, I saw a cell phone in your hand. I think that you're right in saying that in some way the insurance company could create a method by which they keep track of your driving. And Progressive's even done that with the um, the safe driving little insert thing. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You put it in your car. little device that goes in there yeah, and measures and how many hard brakes you have. Yeah, and my, my friend's insurance actually went down and I'm not kidding. She literally, she refused to take her car out past like 8 p.m. because that affected yes. the price and things like yes. that. And it's like, this is such a cool way I, to improve driving. What's fascinating to me about those approaches is that they're really dynamic and they're they're liable to change depending on, you know, we might get self-driving cars or we might get, I mean, we were talking uh, during our, our pre-production meeting about just the, the incredible advancement in safety technology in cars and like, you know, warning sensors and all of these other things that laws don't do a very good job of mm-hmm. accommodating, you know? Like, because they're not market participants. Lawmakers right. are not market participants in right. the same way that insurance companies might be. And so they're not incentivized to quickly and efficiently make change. Yeah. And, and of course, things. legislation is one size fits all. And right. I think mm-hmm. ultimately right. the responsibility does have to get down to the individual yeah. because every human action involves uh, judgments about risk and versus reward. And um, and just the very fact that we are driving in the first place, that we're moving around in these like two ton missiles that go at really high speeds with like these tiny little lines dividing <laughs> us like all all the time. It's incredible. We don't have more accidents. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And but but then you think about all the people who have died, who die all the time, like they said, the thirty seven thousand highway fatalities 
in, you know, we could eliminate those if we just stop driving altogether, if we ban driving mm. altogether. Right. All, all but then think of all the rewards that, that we're, we're missing because of that, all the economic uh, prosperity and, and all the lives that are saved by that economic prosperity. I mean, economic inefficiency really does cost lives yes. because, because there are people around the world who, who are like right on the margin of, of starving. And the, and the more the global economy is, uh, is prosperous, then the fewer people actually starve. And so there, there are just so many trade-offs. And the same thing with, with texting that like you, th- you think about like, especially in Atlanta where, where, you know, where this law is in place, that you imagine how many traffic jams we have and how many people are stuck in traffic for and, one or two hours, maybe even more every day. Right. And, and just being able to text someone at work that, that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be late. So, you know, change your plans accordingly and how much economic efficiency is it or using c- your phone to that. look up where traffic is. I mean, yes. it's all that yeah. little, it's all those little interactions yeah. that make, I mean, you know, innovation I, is the, the, yeah, that stuff. I mean, especially the, you know, what you just said, even about, it's, it's the point that I made earlier about the maps. I, I think that this is a thing that probably goes wildly underappreciated, which is that, like, the, the fact that you have technology that is adaptive, right, that says, here's your route to work, and, oh, wait, there's a ton of traffic here. We're going to reroute you a slightly different direction. Um, for me, and it varies by city, obviously, but for me, a lot of that takes me through side streets in Atlanta. It takes me through neighborhoods and stuff. And I rarely, now, I rarely drive above 35, 40 miles an hour, but it's pretty consistent the entire way there. Um, if I didn't have that map, I would never chance that because it's so yeah. complex. The routes that I take mm-hmm. through Atlanta are mm-hmm. very, very difficult. And memorizing that totally. map would be pretty, it's pretty difficult. That's right. That's Whereas right. I would take the highways, which are congested, fast, very dangerous because there's a lot of, of people coming in or, or exiting the highway. And all that stuff, I don't think, I, but, that's, but that would be my option, right? Like if I didn't have this tool... That would be what I would do. Yeah, it mm-hmm. ends up making life far less convenient. So we have about just 30 seconds before we're going to need to wrap up. But I have to ask the question, do you think in any reality that if this law were to be proven ineffective or that other uh, data comes to the fore and you know they say, well, it's not necessary for us to ban texting, do you think that this sort of thing would ever be rolled back? Or is it just not in our political culture to no. do that these days? Not, I don't think it's in our no. culture to ever remove regulation. Yeah, I think especially it's, as much as there were interest groups that were invested in it before, like even now they're more invested in it. And there, there's mm-hmm. going to be really a case to, of concentrated benefits and dispersed costs. That's right. Yeah, That's people, point. people will forget that it was ever any other way yeah. very, very quickly. Right. right. But right. hey, guys, yeah. I mean, prohibition. We got through it. We did. You are right. Maybe one day we can text again. One day. (laughs) Be safe. Drive safely. Follow your best instincts and respect the road. Uh, And everyone throughout our listening land should do the same. Have a safe, productive, economically efficient, and fun weekend. Thanks for listening to the FeeCast. We'll see you next week. 